Hello, my name is Mark Schroeder, Vice President of Africa Analysis at Stratfor. Today I'll be joined by my colleague, Sim Tak, an Africa analyst on my team at Stratfor. Today we'll be discussing Nigeria and Boko Haram, the Islamist militant group active in northern Nigeria. Sim, Boko Haram has gotten notoriety over the last few days, certainly uh, since its kidnapping of almost 300 girls uh, in northern Nigeria. Tell us a little bit about this kidnapping. Basically, what has happened is Boko Haram has raided a girls' school in northern Nigeria. They loaded the girls onto trucks and took them into forested regions of Nigeria. And so far, the Nigerian government and their security forces have been unable to locate or rescue these girls. Now, this, this kidnapping attack of almost 300 girls, is this unusual? Is this unprecedented? Is this, uh, is this a brand new operation by Boko Haram? So it is rather untypical. Um, Boko Haram has conducted kidnappings before, um, both of foreign citizens and uh, Nigerian locals. But the kidnapping of this large group of young girls is unseen. It kind of brings recollections of, of actions by the Lord's Resistance Army in uh, Uganda, which uh, had a, a very large track of kidnapping. So let's take a step back and, and talk about Boko Haram, kind of and its context within Nigeria. Now, doesn't Nigeria have kind of a long-standing history of radical Islamist militant groups active in, in Nigeria? So Boko Haram really emerged as a very active militant group after 2009. Uh, they, they existed as a movement before that, but the, the death of their leader, uh, Yusuf, basically uh, brought new leaders into a more radicalized track, uh, a more violent tradition, basically. And what is Boko Haram trying to accomplish today? Right now, tactically, they are focused on uh, staying alive, staying active, and resisting the government offensive in northern Nigeria. On a, on a more strategic scale, they have the goal of establishing a caliphate in northern Nigeria, but that is not uh, very realistic right now. Now, let's talk about some of the enabling issues that permit Boko Haram to really continue its insurgency in northern Nigeria and, and recognizing that there is this ongoing history of, of radical Islam in northern Nigeria, but militancy in general across the whole of Nigeria. Um, what are some of the political enablers or, or social and economic enablers that permit Boko Haram to kind of fester in its insurgency? So the, the north of Nigeria is separate from the rest of Nigeria in that it has not benefited from the oil industry, which is located completely in the south. And this has caused frictions on a, on a socioeconomic level. Um, there are ethnic differences between the people living in northeastern Nigeria and those living in the, the Niger Delta. So all of these differences within Nigeria compound into a larger political difference between between the, the Northeast and the South. And that also translates into internal politics, uh, opposition by, by local leaders, uh, which some of which are alleged to, to have ties to Boko Haram. So Nigeria is in the middle of a very stressful political season that will only deepen in its strife with national elections coming up in just one year's time. What do we expect uh, by Boko Haram and its political support base in northern Nigeria amid this very stressful political environment? So Boko Haram itself uh, won't necessarily play a part in the political dynamics towards the elections other than being a, a subject of political debate. Um, but they may very well uh, use the, the political frictions and the, the attention they may get um, by dis disrupting political campaigning, elections themselves. Uh, we have seen them do that in the past. President Goodluck Jonathan is quite controversial in northern Nigeria, being criticized on the one hand for having an ineffective security response to Boko Haram. His political opponents are, are certainly not cooperating with Jonathan that contributes to the successes of Boko Haram. What do we see happening if, if Jonathan were to be re-elected president uh, in one year's time uh, and, and Boko Haram and the political opponents? The basic frictions that exist within Nigeria won't be removed after elections. A victory in elections might temporarily reinforce uh, good luck Jonathan's position as, as a confirmation of his of his position. 
but it won't change the forces at play or the, the ongoing dynamics uh, in dealing with Boko Haram. Um, so when we're talking about the security efforts being conducted in the Northeast, um, those will likely continue along the same path. That's been a, a very uh, interesting conversation, Sin, and thank you for helping us to explain better about Boko Haram and its context within uh, Nigeria. Thank you to our readers for following us today. For more information on Nigeria and Boko Haram, please follow us on stratfor.com.